Right, let's start with the core stuff you turned in. Uh, overall, very, very good. Just a couple things to look at. Uh, one of them, pretty common, but that's just if you rely on Guitar Pro, then you get a wrong chord. So, one of the things talked about is all seven note names must be used. You can't skip a note name. You can't duplicate a note name. So that's regardless of sharps or flats or natural. So like here, you got your F sharp in position one. That's the only kind of F. We can't have an F flat. We can't have an F natural as well as the F sharp. Like that's it, only F sharp. Which is why this technically is incorrect because we already have an F and F sharp. You're missing an E, an E of some kind. So, like you see here in the key signature, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six sharp symbols. But what's listed here is one, two, three, four, five sharps. So, this. And I want you to do this on, on your guitar profile so you remember better. We got to change that manually to an E sharp diminished. So out of context, if you just played this, yes, F diminished, but in the context, uh, con uh, context of the key of F sharp major that is an E sharp diminished so this I mean most likely you're not going to be playing in this key anyway but just for the sake of understanding the theory how all this stuff is tied together yeah E sharp diminished is the proper name for that chord so please update your file with that um, Let's see here. Uh, so there's nothing wrong in this spot. But I did want to point out, you know, what else you could do for the A flat major. So again, this is totally fine. You can do the chord like that. Because that is an A flat major for sure. Typically though, let's see. Uh looking at this guy, so like your F major chord. So for an A flat major chord, what you typically are going to end up doing, is just move that shape up, so you got an A flat. So typically that's what you would end up doing. Um, and yeah, that's really it. So very good, very good. We'll get to this in a moment. All right, so the new number one and uh, everything you did in the videos, everything's sounding good. So this week we're gonna have two gallops, two reverse gallops, two gallops, two reverse gallops, and that's how each bar is gonna go. So let's get to the old 60 beats per minute. Here we go. One. Two, three, four, one, and then two, and then three, and four, and one, and then two, and then three, and four, and one, and then two, and then three, and four, and one, and then two, and then three, and four, and one. One hundred. Oops. One, two, three, four, one. Forty one, two, one, two, three, four. One eighty, one, two, one, two, three, four. Let's go 
go to 150 for the repeats. One, two, one, two, three, four. Right, sweet picking. So very good to hear you set a new personal best. You probably saw this coming. Combination of them now. Combination. All right. So basically, at this point, um, you know, we've introduced or worked on a few different shapes, and there's some other shapes we're going to take a look at, but. You know, getting close to the point where like you basically got the tools on being able to work on sweep picking putting shapes together and all that stuff so um, just a heads up on that we're going to be hitting the rhythmic stuff a bit harder eventually here coming up pretty soon I think so just when we do make that switch if you're wondering like well why are we switching over to the more rhythmic stuff even though the sweep picking hasn't gotten crazy fast yet that's because it takes a very long time to get the sweet picking crazy fast. So when you get to that point though, like what I recommend doing just to get things really fast, and you can do this with any of the shapes now, it's just like work on one, one of them. So even if that means like just the A minor, just that. And then just work that up as fast as you can. I find that um, doing those really small pieces like that is tremendously helpful. Yeah, I was able to uh, pretty recently break through a speed plateau with a shape I was trying to learn. Of course, I played it on my seven string, so it was a little weird on the six. But that's a pretty common shape people do. Ugh. And that's one I never learned when I was taking lessons. What I was taught was the six string version. Oh, goodness. I think that's what I ended up doing finger wise when I was a, a teenager. But uh, yeah, I've like since tried to change how I do it a little bit. But doing the six string is, that's the same pattern right there. You know, most people do it like this. So I wanted to see how well I could get it. And uh, yeah, when I just went from, just, I stopped trying to do several repetitions of the same shape over and over again, and I just stuck to the, to the one, one time through. And I also worked it up in one BPM increments after a certain point. And that, I was able to basically break a speed plateau and get 40 beats per minute higher than I was getting, which was just absurd. But it was pretty damn cool. So yeah, that shape. It's very similar to this major scale or major chord you've been learning. But it's a little, little bit of a finger twist there. Some people do a bar and like a roll it always feels really strange to me to do it. But I feel like I can get it cleaner by doing it this way. Anyway, so the whole point of all that was just saying, like, you know, if you want to, it's like a side thing for yourself if you got the time for it. If you really want to crank the speed out of these things, just one, one time through, just up and down, one shape, whatever one you want to work on, and just, yeah, again, just the one. So this way you can get that speed going faster, 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 faster. And then eventually you can start adding in repetitions. Um, it's definitely very, very helpful just to do the tiny, tiny pieces and then make it longer. So what we're doing right now is just showing you different ways of combining these things. So this way you can, you know, handle whatever sweep things you may come across. Perhaps put together things yourself. Like you said you prefer the grind of learning things and you know practicing them and all that stuff but 
just in case you ever want to put something together, then, you know, I want you to have the knowledge for that, too. And actually, here, as we're getting more into chord progressions, I got the Roman numerals above each of these here. So, like, if you were playing over something, or you wanted to, like, or you're like playing over a song, and you know what the chord progression is, and then you know what the Roman numeral system or the chord number system goes along with it, you can sweep over the top of it because you know, like, okay, well, this, these are the chords, and like in this case, the six, seven, one. So you can play the A minor for the six, B diminished for the seven, and then the C for the one. So like a common progression in metal, like these guys do it all the time, would be like a six, five, four, five. So you can do something like that, you know, like uh, just sweep the six, sweep the five, sweep the four, sweep the five. And then just kind of do stuff like that. You even like just the three strings work great too. So anyway, let's get to playing this guy. One, two, three, four. for the sweet picking. Okay, so the scale thing. The next thing we're going to do is... Oh, that's cut off. Hold on, hold on. Key of G. No, key of E minor. Same thing. We got one sharp. So that's how we know it's in the key of G. Also known as the key of E minor. Remember, they're relative to each other. So, lots of rest symbols here. So basically, you're going to fill things out. So, you learned all those mode shapes, scale shapes in the key of C. So basically, what you're going to do is take those shapes. So you have your, your C Ionian was the first one. That's going to be the first shape in the key of G, but you need to start it on a G note. So that's what you're going to fill in for the first line. So quickly, because I don't want to give too much away. So basically, E, F, G, that's where you start that same shape. So what you play here, and when you input this stuff, you're not going to play the same note two times in a row at any point. It's just one all the way up and back down. So when you get up to the top here, don't play the 13th fret twice or whatever it's going to be down here. Don't play that highest note twice. Just one time and straight back down like this.
So if you input it correctly, all the rest symbols should be filled in and nothing funny should happen. Should be that way anyway. Um, so yeah, just be careful. If, if something, like if the bar ends up turning red, something was inputted wrong by the time you go to the next bar. So anyway, um, so yeah, we take that same shape and we start it on G. Yes, I played that quick because, again, trying not to give away too much. Maybe I should at least do the first one slow. So yeah, just think about how you did the pattern here. So you have like the whole step, whole step, the half step, whole step, the whole step, half step, and then back down, right? It's gonna be the same thing here. So in the key of C, after that you had the D Dorian shape. So the Dorian shape is going to come next in the key of G as well. It's all in the same order, every single time. It's always going to go in the same order. So reference the stuff you have for the key of C. Use that as much as you need to, and you're just going to shift it to the new spot. So in the, uh, the key of C, you had the E Phrygian twice. At least you, you learned it in two different places, right? So you learned it up here. And you learned it down here. We're so in this key, you're not gonna have E Phrygian. You're gonna have E something else. I don't want to say what it is yet. I mean you might already know, because it's the relative minor. But anyway. So the scale shape, or the mode shape, that starts with E, you'll be playing it up here, and also starting in the open position. So that one will be done twice. So in the key of C, Phrygian was done twice. You learned that in two places. But Phrygian is only going to be played in one place this time. So hopefully that makes sense. Of course, any questions about that, let me know. Now, a great way to tell if you have an incorrect note anywhere when you're doing this because this is in or I have the uh, key signature here if you put in a note that's not in key you're gonna see a sharp or a flat symbol up here maybe even a natural symbol we shouldn't see any of that stuff up here in the standard notation if the notes are correct so keep that in mind it's a way of kind of making sure you didn't add in a wrong note so the other thing just to practice so chord progressions we got we're going to just start with the key C right now and you can you'll get some sweet picking practice kind of uh, with these so there's one two three progressions to play let's cut off a little bit I'll, I'll adjust it as I get there so I just want you to make it through each of these progressions 100% correct at least once. Just once is fine. You already got, well, because I don't want you to have too much stuff, right? And we're going to be playing these kinds of chords for quite a while, adding to them, making things more complex and all that stuff. So I want you to pay attention to not just the chord name, but the chord number. That's going to, that's going to lead into next week's stuff. So, as far as like making videos of the stuff, um, let's see, because if you want to, you can make videos early for these, like when it's feeling pretty good. If you want to just like, when it feels like, yep, I definitely, I'm getting this, I think I'm going to get it 100% on this next one, you can go ahead and start recording right away. Now I have this written out in 16th notes. That might be too fast. So, I'll show you what you can do. So, 16th note way, as it's written, one, two, three, four.
So if that ends up being too much of a pain in the butt, since it's a new thing, do eighth notes instead. That's fine, totally fine. You set the pace that works for you to get through these things. Because the main thing I want you to learn, the names of the chords and the chord numbers. Kind of seeing how that goes. So we got chord number one, six, three, five. So you get major for number one, minor for number six, number three is minor, number five is minor. So six, I mean, one, six, three, five. Which could also be done as power chords, as we looked at before. So six, why do I keep saying six? One, six, three, five. So you can always change things into power chords as well. Okay. So again, the eighth note way would be like this. One, two, three, four. Let's go with the next progression, 16th note way. So the A minor, F, C, G. It's a pretty common progression. Um, so we have six, four, one, five. Definitely heard, heard this in song somewhere. So we have six, four, one, five. All right. Here we go. One, two, three. So, I'm going to give you an option here. I know those F power or bar chords be very, very difficult. And I don't want you to have to spend too much time trying to get used to that. You know, we can do some extra bar chord work if need be. But if after a while you're like, to hell with this goddamn shape, I hate it, this is killing my hand. Leave out the high E and B string. So just do this smaller version of it. And just play it like that. So basically just work your way up, back down, up, and back down. So very basically the exact same way you would play this D minor down here. That's how you can do the F major if you need to, if that bar chord is just being too much of a pain in the ass. So basically just... One E and a two E and a three E and a four. So 
that's an option if you need it. So again, the main thing here I want you to learn is the chords, the name of the chords, and the chord numbers going along with it. Because again, those chord numbers, it's going to really tie into what we do next week. So let me play it 16th notes again but with the, the uh, F major option. One, two, three, four... And the third and final one. Move this. There we go. Got the old diminished chord in here. So as far as like modes, there is mode stuff going on here too. Like all chord progressions, well, all, most, I'm gonna say most. Most chord progressions are gonna have some kind of mode associated with it. And I say most because it's like say you're learning a death metal song or even like thrash metal and you have a bunch of atonal stuff just like chromatic nonsense all over the place yeah not a chord progression in a mode happening there you just got chromatic scale going crazy but melodic stuff yeah you definitely have a mode going on here so like this first progression here that's in c ionian and then the next thing that's in a aeolian and then this third one is an e phrygian so we got chord number three e minor chord number two the d minor chord number seven b diminished and once again chord number four the f and just like before if the bar chord is too much of a pain in the butt go ahead and do the abbreviated way that's fine all right, so here we go. One, two, three, four. So, any questions come up, let me know. Oh, I also should add here for the, uh, the stuff that you fill in, what I'd like you to do is put in the mode name too. So, basically, I think I gotta change the setting here. There it is. Uh, so you can hit T for the text box to come up and then you know, put in the root notes and then the mode name. So, basically, the first one, I'll give it away. First one's going to be G Ionian. So, in the key of C, you learned C Ionian. So, here it's going to be G Ionian. So, the next mode is going to start with A. It'll be A something. Third mode is going to be B something. The fourth mode will be C something, and so on. So, yeah, let's put those in as well. Okay, now I think we've covered it all. So, yep, any questions, let me know. And I'll see you again next week in the new videos.